Oh yeah, he's uh, got his game face on, computer warmed up, and he is ready to annihilate the enemy team. And you know how you can tell it's a Red Mercy game? Zed band, Twisted Fate band. I'm surprised there's no, oh, like, yeah. you know, Akali or Yasuo, considering, uh, you know, how much of a name this guy has for himself, let alone in the Toronto scene. This guy has won so many of the Solo Q Legends tournaments, and, you know, when he doesn't win, he's in the top three. Oh, he's absolutely. got uh, unrivaled, you know, coordination and leadership. Uh, this guy just demands respect when he joins a team. And, you know, that's exactly the winning formula for these Solo Q Legends tournaments. Oh, yeah. I've seen him play a lot of Assassin Champions, and he just doesn't demand or respect. He he earns it, too. Like, he grabs it by the balls and just annihilates enemies when yeah. he plays these Assassin Champions. Yeah, it is not uncommon to see him absolutely mm -hmm. destroy a lane. Uh, wouldn't it be surprised if he looks towards something like Lissandra, that is a champion that he plays quite often, not to mention things like Katarina, uh, Diana even, so... Mm -hmm. Lots of things left open for him. On the flip side, we've got Vi Band, Anivia Band, and Graves Band. I did notice that there's been quite a few people playing Anivia in this tournament. And, you know, it's not bad against this tank meta, considering that there are a lot of things that, you know, don't have a lot of mobility, like something like an Aurelia. And if you can place an Anivia alt down and just slow them and give, you know... It's like, in a lot of ways, uh, Protect the Carry Mage. It's a control mage who does a lot of damage as well. So It's a lot of consistent damage, too. Yeah. Like, as long as you're in that circle, you're going to be taking X amount of damage for X amount of time. So it's it's very reliable. Yep, some other nice mages like that in the current meta are Karthus, is very strong currently. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's really cool to see players go back to these champions because uh, if you've got your high-rated player on a, a, a control mage like that, you can really run team fights by yourself so i think i remember playing uh sorry seeing red mercy play karthus back in like season two yeah season three sure. and he was very very aggressive like for us karthus which is probably one of the squishiest champions in the game he was super aggressive yeah yeah he so. i mean this guy plays everything he plays cassiopeia as well ari like he is a tried and true mid laner uh we do have the sejuani first pick going over to red mercy's team and obviously the bottom lane picked up for the purple team as well Jinx could lead them into playing towards some sort of late game team composition. They could pick up something like a Lulu here, you know, a new new jungle, anything like that is available. And uh, on the flip side, there's just a huge front line and of course the Sivir utility to help them out in, uh, you know, their map movements. Grabbing Leona to try and match the amount of crowd control that Nautilus and Sejuani can put out. So Leona does a very good job. With Leona, you can CC three targets at once if you happen to get all the right angles, but. I mean, right now, they're going to need another pretty chunky utility-heavy champion to try and match out what Red Mercy's team has got. Yeah, they're going to need to uh, sort of pick the direction of their team composition in this rotation right here. Something like a Jarvan, I think, would really work well because you can just alt Cassio. everyone inside and then Leona alt on top of them, you know? Just... Wouldn't it be surprised if we see, oh, a Wukong? That's actually very, very nice in terms of engage and disengage. If uh, they, uh, it's most likely going to be a top lane Wukong. Uh, in terms of the jungle, I think Anunu would fit absolutely perfectly here. They've yep. got a Hecarim to hopefully get into the back line, but you know, uh, Cassiopeia really, she just soaks that first ultimate from Hecarim. He's not going to blow up anybody, and then you know, the re engage coming out. That's exactly what Jinx wants to do. They want to get the Cassiopeia ultimate, get the reset on Jinx, and then just clean up the team fight. She's got the execute with her ult. That's so much AoE damage. Couple that with a Wukong, and Red Mercy obviously reading the composition perfectly, oh. looks towards picking up that LeBlanc, which this is, is a fantastic scary. answer to uh, deal with those squishy but powerful backlane champions of the purple team. Yeah, LeBlanc's very, very scary on Red Mercy, and very scary in general, you know, and like you said, Cassiopeia just going to try and, you know, scare someone, lock them down. Wukong can even help keep them in place with that, with that knockup. Yeah, they've got um, a fantastic team composition in terms yeah. of team fighting, and you know their lanes are strong as well. Uh, however, on the flip side, I mean the, the blue team really does have a fantastic composition of their own. The only real problem is that they don't have disengage apart from Sejuani ultimate and the Sivir ultimate. So there so is you did the, call new, the new. new. Yep. Uh, that only problem there is going to be you know keeping that Jinx alive because Red Mercy, like I'll, I'll say it, he's pretty much the faker of Toronto at this point. He's a very very strong mid laner oh, yeah. probably and, the faker uh, of, of 
certain parts of Canada at the yeah, very least. Absolutely. Maybe not just Toronto. Absolutely. So he is uh, his primary target is going to be that back line, and there's no shields, there's no heal, nothing like that for the back line. So at the very least, they're going to need to get some sort of you know Aegis of the Legion onto either the jungler and the support. Those guys are going to be tanky, but. I mean, zone control from a Nautilus, or zone control from a Nunu, and zone control from a Wukong don't really help against LeBlanc and Hecarim because they're so easily able to get into that backline and just pop somebody immediately. Yeah, and if we're just looking at like number of tanks from you know red or a blue side to red side, Sejuani and Nautilus they're very tanky champions, and Hecarim can be played kind of as like an off tank. Nunu doesn't exactly have a lot of tankiness early, at least not as much compared to Nautilus or Sejuani. Wukong could be considered an off tank, and Leona is tanky, but not at the same level as Nautilus. So, I feel like she'll be a really good distraction, but I don't think she'll be living as long as you know Nautilus or Sejuani. Yep, that is a very good point. I'm actually, you know, gonna say it here. It's gonna be a lot on to Silver Nix. He's going for that barrier. His matchup in the mid lane is going to pretty much dictate how the rest of this game is going to go. Wukong, no matter what happens, is still going to be pretty useful with his ultimate. Honestly, yeah. it would be nice to have one that blows somebody up. But with Hell Butterfly on that Nunu, they're going to want to have control around that mid lane. That will give him the opportunity to invade the opposing jungle, you know, give a, a lot of trouble to the Sejuani. And if Silver Nyx is on the back foot and is getting pushed in by LeBlanc, if he starts to lose that lane, it's going to snowball out of control. They're going to lose every sort of, you know, uh, control on the map, they're not going to have the vision, yep. and Red Mercy will be able to roam and set up picks with that Sejuani. A very, very strong duo combination instead of in, in, in terms of picking up kills. Uh, in terms of just lane strength and like strength of junglers, in terms of setting up just buff steals and everything like that, the advantage is definitely over to the purple team. And Cassiop is a very, very strong laner if you're good in that champion. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this game in terms of the picks and bans is very, very close. It's just going to be down to, you know, who is able to play their champions better. Yeah, what I like about, uh, you know, the red side, purple side is those, you know, the Leona alt, the Cassia Opia alt, and the Wukong alt, those are three alts that, you know, are still really good alt even if you're behind. Because Wukong can just jump in, knock everybody up, then, you know, the Cassiopeia scare can freeze them all in place, and Leona can just pile right on top. Yeah. So it's, those are three like forgiving alts. It's a less. great balance of frontline and backline for both of these team comps here. You know, uh, there's not a whole lot to protect metabolism, but because there's so much distance engaged from that team, nobody's really going to be going for the backline apart from that Wukong, and he's really going to be aiming to knock up everybody. He's going to be trying to be, you know, the real initiation with a Leona ultimate and just get, like, those big AoE knockups. He's not going to be as much of an anti-carry unless he does really well in his lane. Uh, it's, you know, this is a pretty interesting pick-ban phase here. I really gotta say, uh, this is a very, very balanced situation. I hope Silver Nyx is able to match up with Red Mercy. I mean, he did absorb a target ban of his own, so should be interesting. Yeah, Silver Nyx. Um, I feel like Silver Nyx is probably going to pick up a really early tier, mostly for the defensive capability when it turns into Seraphs, because if LeBlanc just goes ham onto Cassiopeia during like the mid-game, there's a good chance that he will die instantly. Because LeBlanc is, you know, as we all know, a burst nightmare. So at least if he has that, that Seraph's Embrace, he can shield himself from some of the damage and hopefully return fire. Yeah, I would be uh, mm. surprised if he didn't go towards an Abyssal Scepter as well after that tier. And, you know, I would like to see an early Banshee's Veil on the Jinx as well. Yeah, I could definitely foresee that. If not Banshee's Veil, possibly uh, the Mercurial. You know, just to get some of the buffs off, get the movement speed increase. Or, sorry, the debuffs off and uh, get the movement speed increase. All right, so here we go. Jumping into the rift momentarily. Just remind you guys, this is uh, pretty much the welterweight going on here. We've got Red Mercy uh, off to defend his honor of this tournament. He put in 1500 bucks to uh, set this whole thing up. You know, donated, really liked what we're doing here with the Solo Q Legends. And he actually came in second place. Last here we time. go, poofing onto the rift, both sides. Um, I do. By the way, I do like the the Wukong Cassiopeia match, matching skins, Jade Fang. 
Yeah, and you know, one of my favorite compositions to run back in the day actually was uh, Wukong Karthus. And this play is pretty similar, to be honest, in a, a lot of the ways where Wukong is kind of a cleanup carry. Uh, and that's basically going to be his job with the, uh, the Jinx. So mm -hmm. very, very, very strong compositions. We got double flask for the top laners and uh, double target for the bottom layers as well. So pretty much identical items all the way around the map. You know, a 1v2 would be pretty strong here, but I don't think that either team will be doing it. I, I would like to see a 1v2 forced out from the uh, red side. They'd like to, you know, avoid that bottom lane matchup. Not the best for them, not, not you know, Leona isn't able to kind of lock down a Sivir if she uses her spell shield properly. And the blue side would be eager to get that dragon control but because it is a solo queue tournament, I don't expect that we will see that. So it looks like it's just Probably going could. to be the standard lands. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, there's, there's it, a it's happened before yeah. for sure. But, uh, you know, you got to be pretty coordinated, not, not even necessarily coordinated as a team, but you have to have some sort of experience playing together so that everyone knows what is supposed to happen in the 1v2. I noticed Lee, uh, Red Mercy going somewhat deep into the utility tree, picking up the improved health pots over Cassiopeia. Yeah, he is going so to be pushed quite hard yeah. uh, in those early levels. So I he think is he's gonna... expecting some some relatively decent damage out of Cassiopeia. So it's like insurance in case he takes too much of a bad trade. He can get a little bit more health out of those health pots, make him last a little bit longer. Yeah, he basically just needs to get to level 6. Uh, or he needs to wait for his jungler to get to level 6, where he can get the support from that Sejuani. Up until that point, it is going to be on Epic Sin to uh, you know, just kind of wore it up for him and make sure that he's safe and that he can avoid getting pushed in and can react to the Nunu if he needs to. Lots of push yeah. pressure coming down from this bottom lane here. Jinx doing her best to deal with Sivir's auto attack push. Actually, a Q missed there, so early trade going in the favor of Red Mercy. However, you know, that's a 17 second cooldown on that LeBlanc W, so this is where Silver Nyx needs to start stepping up. Yeah, typically on Cassiopeia, you know, you can start with um, W, because it's the same amount of mana, plus it has a bigger range, and the cooldown is slightly longer, but not enough to make like a huge difference. So you could start with W on Cassiopeia if you wanted to, uh, but the typical start is Q. Something we need to pay attention to is that nobody on the top Ooh. lane has Smite. Here we go, a little Good bit of aggression. Leona. Yep, Leona going in, getting the stun off. Nautilus getting trapped in the Jinx grenades, but really just some trading back and forth. Looks like Red Mercy's team will manage to get the better end of the deal. Not a lot of sustain in this game for the bottom lanes. Oh, Hector, away. going deep. Well, nope, I'm thinking about going deep, but not going deep yet. Yeah, neither top laner has Smite. They both have uh, Teleport available. However, Fadeaway has used his Ignite already, and you know, Wukong gets very, very strong as he moves towards level 6. Oh, good stun on Leona. Really good stun. Stopping that Nautilus stun before it even started, so... Metabolism out of mana already, and Jinx, you know, sitting pretty pretty healthy right there. Uh, he was looking to push. He wanted some harass. Yeah, obviously not working out the best for him. Hasn't got a spell shield. Oh, here we go. Leona going in. Nautilus getting a good stun off and a good... Dredge line onto Jinx and still going going past and yeah, but you know that Sivir actually missed her spell shield there, and that's like a, a 25 30 second cooldown. So he's even worse on mana now. And in terms of effective health in that bottom lane, red side definitely very very strong in the advantage, and they've got the push. They just need to be worried about the Sejuani. But guess what? She's top lane, trying to get some wards down, control of that scuttle crab. So they'll be fine for now. Getting the wards out now. Red Mercy really bullying Cassiopeia. And I was actually concerned. Oh, oh he's going in. She's really got looking a barrier. Some autos. Burning Ignite, too. Yeah, that's not necessarily what you want to see. You gotta land your Qs. You gotta, you know, pressure very hard as soon as LeBlanc uses all of her abilities. You need to get in her face. And, you know, Epic Silver Nix hasn't really been able to do that so far. Hell Butterfly forced to go control the wave in mid. Oh, top lane, here we go. Wukong looking very unpleasant right now. Hecarim going in, but he backs off. Doesn't want to take any Yes, he will damage. fade away. Nunu being, you know, forced to sit mid here is really a tough place for him to be right now. He wants to be getting deep vision, start messing with that... That, uh... 
Ooh, Sejuani, she wants to keep him from hitting level 6 as best and for as long as he can. Being forced to sit mid is the exact opposite of what his team needs from him right now. Yeah. Red Mercy, though, yep. doing really, really well against Cassiopeia. Didn't even burn all of his consumables. He actually had one health pot left, so... Playing really good. Jinx taking a turret shot and some poke. Just yeah. managing to get out of it. Mark, you're taking a lot of damage from the tower. Actually throwing yeah. away all advantage they've had down there. Burn the flash, too. So. And, you know, that's not a good sign when your mid lane is already struggling. You guys needed to be kind of the the, the strength for your team. And it doesn't yeah. seem like it's going to be there for very much longer. They are forced to back. They've got a bit of a CS lead. But once that foot is kind of taken off the gas, it's hard to get it back. Yeah. We're going to see Sejuani roaming down there very shortly. Because they know that they just went back. So Sejuani's going to pick up a camp, maybe two, and then make her way down. Look at Red Mercy just doing so much damage to Silver Nyx. And he's so afraid now that he's just going to try and push the lane. And you know, this was the problem with the composition. They don't have enough battle power uh, you know, around that mid lane. And soon enough, Red Mercy is going to be everywhere with Epic Sin. And uh, that's not a good sign for that bottom lane, considering they did just blow the flash on Jinx. That is a prime, prime target for Red Mercy. Look to see him rowing down there very shortly. Yeah, he's playing it very, like, kind of like attack move based, where you just do some damage, and then you back out, go back to farming, and then go back in when there's an opportunity, and go back out, and... Here's Nunu. Oh, here we go. Nunu coming in. Leona doing what she can. Looks like Nautilus is going to go down, and, yep, giving it to Jinx for first blood. Definitely a little bit of a mistake coming out from the blue team there. All they needed to do was kind of sit back. They knew Jinx had no flash, so let her push. She wants to push. And, uh, a little bit over-aggressive there. Yeah, you know, just wait for your mid laner. Uh-oh, Hikarum. Going to be a, a, an easy dragon for them as well. Yep. Nunu's a really good at, at crushing dragons, so... Wukong uh, putting off the nice juke earlier. Going invisible when Hikarum came in. Actually putting a little bit of uh, clone damage on, but Hecarim, you know, he, he's someone who takes punishment really well and dishes it out even better. Leona needs to get back. She needs to pick up some sort of vision because you can see this is the early power spike coming out from the blue team here. They've got the sight ward on Nautilus. He's about to hit level six. Uh, Sivir's about to hit level six, and you know, so is the jungler. That is the real money maker right here. They need to get vision down. They need to make sure that they don't get ganked. They haven't gone B since they've taken that dragon, and this is opening them up for a very, very dangerous situation. Look at this huge wave. Red Mercy. Yeah, Silver Lynx is gonna be you know, stuck at that tower. They've got Sejuani around the bottom lane. Look to see Red Mercy going for a roam here. Yeah, and he, uh, Silver next burned the barrier too out of fear because he was afraid Red Mercy was gonna go in, but. Oh, good spell shield on Sivir. Really good. Well timed. You knew, trying to get some vision down. Good job. Oh, excellent dredge line. Leona trying to do what she can. And yep, Sivir all came out. Red Mercy going in, and wow, gets the kill on the Silver Next. Just exploded whatever health that was left. Yeah, you know, I, I hate to say that I was kind of doubting that Cassiopeia pick. It's not that it's a terrible matchup, it's just very, very hard to play against the LeBlanc in that situation. Yeah. And when put, you know, the pressure is put to you like that, if you're not used to playing against somebody on, you know, a different computer, don't have the normal setup, not exactly used to it, yeah. you know you what? out of control very quickly. Yeah, Cassiopeia hasn't reached the 100 stack limit, or, well, section yet, where she can get heals off of her Twin Fang. So for her to regenerate any kind, like, have any sustainability whatsoever, it's just not there. And wow, Red Mercy going in again. Thanks for the blue buff. Yeah, blue buff godlike on, uh, on LeBlanc, as yeah. we all know. 69 CS, 70 CS at this point. Just so strong. Like we said, Red Mercy is an uh, incredible relentless. carry for his team. Absolutely relentless. Right out of the gate. Go. Pretty Cold good dredge that. line on Nautilus. Didn't manage to get the the champion though, but Jinx just going in. Oh, good ult by Leona, but didn't quite get the stun. Heal coming yeah, up. From big Sibur. turnaround. Every ability is used. Nautilus needs to, you know, get back in there. Yep. A little bit scary for him, I guess. 
He played the part well, though. He was distracting, let Sivir lay into uh, Leona and to Jinx, because now they both have to back, and, and Sivir can stay. Yeah, finally so. backing. This is going to be the first time Leona's backing since they got that early kill. She really needs to pick up some wards here. I'd like to see a Boots 5 and, you know, like a, a pink ward, maybe a couple wards. Just get some vision control, because you're going to need to make some sort of pick or play if you want to come back in this game, at the very least, you need the vision to just hold yourself. Let your Jinx keep farming because she's going to be the one to carry this game without vision control. What's going to keep you from getting dove by a Sejuani? You know, a, a TP from Hecarim and Red Mercy moving down towards the bottom lane. You know what's good though is because Red Mercy is winning his lane so heavily, Sejuani can just keep staying in the jungle and farm. You know, if, if Epic Sign is you know, so determined to, to get ahead, didn't even have to come to, to mid lane. He could just stay top or stay bot and just farm all he wants and help out when he needs to. 11 minutes into the game, two to one. Goldie slightly in the advantage of Red Mercy's team. And you know, we gotta bring it back to what we know about these teams. We know that Red Mercy is a fantastic leader. Can't say enough good things about this guy. Obviously, look at him just destroying that lane. Very he's good knowledge now. of his champion, too. Yeah, I think he'll be able to get away from that Nunu. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. have his ult, but he's got his flash. But, I mean, this red team here, they do not we don't know much about them in terms of who is their leader on their team, you know, who is going to be making the shot calls, where sort of the strategy is based around. You can tell in their composition what they're trying to play, but it's if you're not, you know, somebody who understands where and how you need to be playing around the map when you're running a composition like this, you very easily kind of fall behind and get snowballed upon if you're not looking towards your win conditions uh -oh, at all mercy. points. I feel like Hell Butterfly may be taking a, a leadership role here because he called a really good dragon earlier. And he knew he could take it confidently and it was uncontested. I don't even think the other team knew about it until they saw one of the uh, enemy champions with the buff. So it's just a, uh, an educated guess on my part. We haven't seen very much but, up in this top lane. Oh, here we go. Wukong has decided to go for that team bat, so he'll be able to... Uh oh Red Mercy finds his pick, gets the stun down, will he be able to dodge Cassiopeia ultimate, gets a little bit, you know, too scared. Makes the right decision, though, as there was a Nunu there. But, uh, yeah, this Wukong in the top lane is going to be, you know, a pretty effective anti-carry. Uh-oh, Red Mercy going on. Yep, and taking out In the out face of the Nunu, that's just how weak that 2v2 is, but... Actually, if he had a Luden's Echo there, which is clearly what he's building towards, he probably could have taken them both out fairly easily. Uh, and we noticed that he's built he built two Doran's rings for better mana regeneration, and he didn't go straight for um, Relinomicon, which seems to be the the most gold efficient mana regeneration item. Hecker, I'm going in on to Wukong, but he's just gonna back away. Got what he needed and got out. We've got ten seconds till the next dragon comes up here. Uh, looks like Red Mercy and Sejuani are aware of the timer on it. They've got a little bit of vision control down there. There is one ward, so if that bottom lane does walk through it, which they are right now, they're going to be spotted. They know what's going on. They've got their ultimates up. Uh, Jinx has her summoners, which is very, very important here. Will the red team be looking to commit? Here we go. Team fight starting. Big, big team fight going in. Nunu's ult gets stopped immediately. Teleport coming in. Wukong ult goes out. Sivir going to die very, very fast. Hecarim trying to go for Jinx, but I don't know if he's going to get the kill. And no, he does not. The Twink Fang coming out, and a really, really good ultimate from Wukong sold that deal. Red Mercy is actually backing in the bush next to Dragon, but he's thinking maybe he can get an easy pick off in a second. He's not sure, though. Oh, and oh, he's going for it. He does manage to get a kill. Very good. Wukong going for the chase now. Possibly going to get a kill. Tries oh. to get the Juke, and... No, nope, doesn't do it. But definitely gonna need to get a replay on that team fight here. Let's yeah, take a look. Yeah, please do. That was really intense. So definitely walk us through what happened there. Yeah. So obviously we do know that it was a little bit of a scramble. They see the new new alt going. Hell Butterfly gets interrupted almost immediately. Both TPs coming down. But look at that Wukong alt just putting so much pressure on the backline right now. He is an anti carry. Has gotten so much damage. Fade away. Only going on to marker at the end. Not even going to be able to clean him up. And then here we go back to the dragon. Look at that. Silver Nix, you know, basically just used for his ultimate. Doesn't matter how far behind he was. Jinx obviously no fear. They don't know Red Mercy is there. That's just a lack of vision control. No big deal. But in terms of that team fight, because of how strong uh, Sejuani, or how strong the Wukong was at this point, 
it pretty much just made it an easy team for the, for them once they got their big AoE ultimates off. Hell Butterfly, you know, just the base damage from that ability, even if it only cast it for a second or two, did a decent amount. There's no real defensive stats, and they were able to just clean up off the early game and mid game base damage of their carries. Good protection on the Caitlyn as well. However, I don't know if it's going to be like that in the future fights once Red Mercy does get his items. He has picked up that Luden's Echo at this point, and, you know, three That's kills on the Wukong is a pretty scary. big deal, but is that enough? I honestly, I think it will. They clearly made a point here. They took advantage of Red Mercy being low health. Because he was not at full health, I think, at the beginning of that fight. I don't believe he was. Um, but they did a good job of taking advantage of the fact that Red Mercy wasn't there. And we got a big fight in the bot lane now. Sivir popping the ult. Knockup going on to Jinx and actually getting the kill on a Jinx too. Leona flashing. And yep, Sivir getting a double. All right, really well played for Metabolism and um, Code Chestnut. Sejuani coming in too, trying to get the easy kill. Gets the stun, and the reverse stun comes out. Red Mercy going to get the kill onto Silver Nyx, and then hopefully get another kill into Hell Butterfly. Nunu oh, yeah. should not be ganking this mid lane. A nope. huge, huge mistake from them. That's why I was saying whoever is making the calls needs to be the one who's also developing the strategy and knowing where the win conditions are, you know, where the strengths are on the map. Nunu is not a ganker. You can't win against a LeBlanc and a Sejuani if you have a Cassiopeia. You don't have the burst damage. And, you know, sadly, he keeps coming back to this mid lane. And once again, he's been blown up, as has his mid laner. She's only got 66 CS towards Red Mercy's 126, one and one on that LeBlanc. Jinx, I mean, in the future is not going to be able to live. There's no way unless, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> unless they find amazing initiations and can lock down and blow up Red Mercy. Yeah, and that'll be challenging too because you all know that they're gonna re re protect Red Mercy until he gets that, you know, perfect attack, yep. perfect, perfect burst onto any champion. This really is typical Red Mercy play though, just absolutely dominating his lane, taking over the game. Look at that, Help Butterfly is basically just sitting there trying to be gank prevention. Oh, and, and there goes the ultimate. even protector. matter. What is going on? Fade away though, they get the tower looking for the engage. Red Mercy, does he have another jump? Does not look like it. Uh -oh. Moose 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 is in trouble though. Yep, so Shwani going deep in onto that and manages to pick up Leona. Big Wukong going in for the ultimate. Good Jinx ult, managing to get almost everybody low, but Red Mercy and Hecarim just ridiculous. Ridiculous damage coming out of both of them, just yeah. annihilating the other team. Oh, but Marker going in. Hopefully, you're going to get Nautilus and does pick up Nautilus. Yeah, this Still is the Jinx in. cleanup. I mean, if they had waited a second or two more where they had yep. Jinx there to follow up in the damage, that would have been perfect. They needed the Nuna there to zone for the Cassio so she didn't just get blown up. Didn't even get to use her ultimate. You can see the potential in the team comp. It's a very, very strong team comp, even with Jinx not being that strong. Sure, she's got her Infinity Edge, but she doesn't hasn't reached that like super scale yet. This team is right on the edge here. This red team is so close to being able to con to contest these fights, but they're making very, very slight mistakes that are really hampering them here. They, you know, did okay there. They got a big Wukong ultimate. They were able to hang on, but if they keep going at mistimed team fights there, it's not gonna, it's just so, so risky for them to do that. But you know where they are capitalizing is when Red Mercy's team stays a little bit too long they managed to pick something up it's like they got that nautilus and he was out of position so they are managing to get something out of these fights it's just not as much as what the blue team is gaining which is really important and wow good adc skirmish in the bot lane no supports available and wow really good stun on Leo uh, by leona but the Luden echo manages to get out the last second teleport coming in from both sides and it looks like leblanc is gonna rip these teams apart again. Nunu finally coming in. Tries to ult, but stops immediately. Oh no, never mind. It does get off. The whole thing gets off. Wukong going in for the ultimate. This is a long fight. Cassiopeia just doing what she can to blow people up, but it just doesn't happen. You know, that there's was... that same miscommunication that we yep. talked about. This red team is just not on the same page enough here. They, they, you know, are in and out of these team fights, not committing, not lining up their ultimates properly. They stayed a little bit too long. We're uh -oh, Red Mercy. Jinx Rocket coming in. And... Oh, two kills. Good return. Yeah, that uh, Hecarim does get taken down there. That will be a shutdown for the Jinx. Not bad at all. Let's her pick up another piece of that Phantom Dancer. 
But Red Mercy is just so good at moving his team around the map and, you know, making sure everyone knows where they need to be, able to execute on the mistakes of this red team, of their, you know, miscoordination here. And that's that's the story of these Siliki teams. That's why we always talk about how strong it is to have a shot caller that can completely, you know, handle the game. Yeah, we got a pause coming out just for a few moments, everybody. Um, so really quick, I think we could take a look at the gold right now because it's it's 34k to 27k. You know, we're looking at about what do you think? Like a, a 5k lead, 6k lead for gold, more or less, closer to seven, I think, just because of the little bit of change it's picked up. Um, we got a few disconnects on red side, so please just give us a moment. Oh, on blue side too. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I think people are coming back in. Anyway, um, if we just look at, look at the gold here, Red Mercy has almost double the gold of what Silver Nix has. Um, double the CS, pretty close to double the CS. And eight times the amount of kills. So there is a huge gold discrepancy just at this point in the games. games for Cassiopeia. Her only option right now is to forego damage. She needs to build either a Rylize immediately and then just continue to build tanky, maybe get a Void Staff there. And she just needs to crush the front line. She needs to protect her AD carry and she needs to be, you know, calling things out at the very least just to make sure that her team knows how to play these team fights. These guys need to be on the ball. Do they have all their ultimates up? No, they don't. They don't have Jinx ultimate. They don't have Wukong yeah. ultimate. They're this is a dragon. terrible idea. But they do get it, and that's the third dragon for red team, if I'm not mistaken. And big ult coming in, says one, he goes in. Nautilus doing what he can to stun all his enemies here. Red Mercy was nowhere to be found for that part of that fight, and Jinx is just getting really excited. Hecarim coming in, finally, and doing a lot of damage over to Jinx, and just... Says one, he manages to go down to uh, Cassiopeia, unfortunately. And Jinx, wow, hanging on by a sliver, doing what she can to put this damage down. Leona trying to follow up here, and she doesn't make it. Yeah, but Leona now in very in trouble. Canceled auto attack, unfortunately, from the Jinx. A little yeah. bit of land jitters there. I can't believe the red team got away with that. They had four of their five crucial ultimates down. Thankfully, the Jinx ultimate came up as that fight went on. <laughs> Oh, Red, Red Mercy, Mercy playing a little bit cheeky. Oh, wow. No way. Missed no, you. no. He's going to go he back gonna in. Away? He's going to go back in. Come on, Red Mercy. No, he's not going to do it. Ah, man. This, this Red Team. He's flirting with danger there, though. This Red Team is really giving me heart attacks. Their decision making on when and why they want a team fight is just a little bit confused, I feel like. You should not be contesting dragon fights against something that's going to be diving your backline when you don't have protection or any of your, like, zoning abilities up or anything. Mm -hmm. However, because, you know, this blue team wasn't in the proper position, they did get away with it. Red Mercy took a lot of damage trying to get that dragon, jumped into the middle. He crazy, job, crazy though. stuff going on in this game. Like, he, he did a really good job trying to yeah, that's pick off dragon. somebody. Yeah. Red team is like, they they know that they're losing, they know that they're behind, but they're not giving up. Oh, well, I mean, the thing is, their comp definitely outscales that of the opposing team. It's oh, just, yeah. Red Mercy is so strong right now that he can eliminate the scaling, especially considering Cassiopeia has fallen so far behind. And, you know, Wukong is going to start falling off in the next couple of levels. He's not the person that really scales. He's going to start building tanky. Yeah, he's going to have to build uh, a Banshee's Veil pretty soon because... If he's gonna get like if he's gonna be the target in the next few fights to get picked off immediately because they just don't want to deal with the Wukong ult, then that's a huge amount of crowd control and damage taken away. Red Mercy floating with danger there again. Yeah, but here we go. Here comes to get the <laughs> vision denial from the blue team setting up their pick and assassination composition here. Good job by them. Mm -hmm. uh, just understanding what they need to do and how they need to control the map to play into their composition. Red Mercy soon will be able to carry this game. Uh oh, Red himself. Mercy. If that was anything other than a Leona, that person would have been dead. Yep. Actually, if he went in on Leona too, there was a good chance he might have uh, taken her out, but a lot of teammates were nearby, so. This is, um. This is an interesting game because I, I really want to see, like, a matchup between Cassiopeia and somebody other than LeBlanc right now. Because Cassiopeia is, I 
Fink at her 250 stack. But go. never mind, big team fight. Leona going in, dies instantly. Amazing, says one all, capturing three people. Good jinx, uh, grenades going out. Cassiopeia living, of all things, that survive in that fight. Red Mercy going hunting now, going for the Nunu, but actually, Sivir gets the kill. Jinx actually dying to Sivir in the end. And... Yep, they're just going to keep pushing now. They didn't even need Hecarim for... We're going to take a look at this replay. Now, the problem here, we will see it, is that the red team tries to engage here, and they set themselves up to get absolutely demolished by this Sejuani ult. Look at that counter engage. Everyone Amazing that ult. needs to be in the front line is in... Or in the back line is in the front line, and their tank line just absolutely runs at them. Again, Wukong not there. He needed to be there to follow up on that Leona ult. Otherwise, Wasn't he would have been able to, you know, avoid getting... That could have been getting... a completely different fight. If yeah, Wukong was you know, there. Uh, it's just... Silver Nyx needs to be hanging at the back line. Marker needs to be hanging at the back line. Sejuani is just able to lock them up so easily. Mm -hmm. and we got another pause coming out here, guys. So... Silver Nyx almost issues. didn't even get his own ultimate off there. It's just... Simple mistakes that they haven't been able to fix this game, unfortunately. Yeah, it's un it's it is unfortunate. That's what it is. Um, what I haven't I'm surprised to see is a locket that hasn't come out yet from Red Side onto either Leona or to Nunu. Yeah, because that magic damage would help so much. Or sorry, the magic resistance would help so much against. Uh, LeBlanc, the Sejuani, Luden Echo, and the Sejuani, yep. Nautilus. Um, Nautilus too, because he, he does a lot of magic damage. At the very least, I would like to see a, uh, I'm sorry, what is the, the Shirelia's item? The Shire uh, the coin, Ancient Coin, or the Righteous Glory? The Righteous Glory righteous would glory. be perfect to see that yeah. either I think on... Nautilus is making that, because he's got the Ruby Crystal and the, the Sapphire Crystal, so... I would like to see it on the red team, sorry. The red team? Because they are the team that needs to kite back and then re-engage. Yep. And, you know, that's not happening. These guys are getting locked up. Nunu should be the one to make that, too. They're just too because he can thirsty get the for these plays. You see yeah. Nunu in the front line. That's not where he should be. He should be zone controlling. We see Jinx in the front line. That's not where she should be. She should be waiting for the resets after yeah. the AoE damage goes down. And Wukong should be there. Is the most yeah. thing too. He should, it be, should be with a the flank team. by Wukong and Leona at the same time. Yep. And then Nunu eats the Sejuani ultimate, standing in front of his carries. Zone for the Hecarim coming in, and the Nautilus and the LeBlanc running in, and then absorb the damage with the uh, with the Aegis. I'm just awful. That's with okay. Don't today. worry about it. With the uh, locket of the Iron Solari. Locket of the Iron Solari, and then the re-engage. And you know. It's really sad to see because this actually happens so often in solo queue tournaments where they've got the idea down, they've got the composition down, it's just they're the not execution. able to execute it properly. Mm -hmm. And it's simply because in solo queue, you don't actually execute your compositions properly ever. There's no real, like certain times you'll find a pick if that's kind of what your composition is. You'll find a pick, you'll mm -hmm. find the engage if you're a hard engage composition. But when you're picking something like this, which is an incredible composition, you just aren't completely aware of how you're supposed to you know, play it out, what things you're looking for before you can re-engage. You're, you're kind of just like, oh, we caught them, let's fight. And that opens you up to getting re-engaged on or disengaged on. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to Or the counter flex, disengaged. You know what I mean? Yeah. You need to be able to yeah. flex in what you're doing and, and just adapt. If some, you need uh, to save it. certain things for certain times. Yeah. And like that's we've... that's the problem we see with a Janna a lot of the times, mm -hmm. too. People just kind of Janna alt for the Whenever, sake of yeah, Janna alting. Exactly. So he's resuming. But I remember seeing, mm -hmm. I think it was um, on Team Liquid, the jungler for Team Liquid, Dominate, mm -hmm. who plays Sejuani, and he always saves that Sejuani ult for like halfway through the fight. Abs it's a lot like Oriana. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a re engage tool. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you have engage elsewhere, uh, you can. Oh, it looks like we are back into the game. If you have engage elsewhere, you can. Uh, you know, save it for later and save it. Because, I mean, Engage pretty much just consistently gets better every time you stack on top of it. Similar to things like uh, AoE CC or Disengage or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I played a composition. I played in one of these tournaments a while ago, and I, I was fortunate enough to win. I had a really good team. Um, but one of the reasons that I feel like we won was because we were running things that a lot of teams didn't see the point to. We would run a Malphite, a Mumu, and a Janna. And it's because a lot of people would be like, why would you run a Janna with that? And I had told the support that, you know, just save it. Uh-oh. Oh, good flash by Marker. 
Nunu getting the ultimate off. Hopefully going to do a lot of damage to Hecarim. Does chunks him just a little bit. Marker doing a lot of damage, but that Sejuani ultimate and, oh man, the depth charge coming in. Red Mercy going to do what he can, but to uh, distract Wukong, but Wukong chose poorly because Hecarim come charging in and uh, yep, manages to get taken out. Yeah, that's just the pick composition the taken out Wukong, being sorry. executed quite nicely. Fade's yep. going to go back and get in with a TP. Got his home guards as well, so easily enough for him. He'll be there to shred down that Baron. Nunu's not going to be able to get there in time. I was just trying to say in a long-winded way that people need to sort of be assigned responsibilities. You need to know what your champion is supposed to do in the team fight and make sure that you're always doing that. And once, you know, once everybody's on the same page, then it's just a matter of adapting as a team and, and how well you guys work together. And, uh, you know, that's why getting those extra couple days of practice and having somebody that is like, you know, a theory crafter or whatever is just so key to these to these games and uh, it can't be overstated and we'll see as we get further along in the tournament how the teams are playing their team comps usually we'll see uh, a team stick to one or two different styles that they like and it's something that they know how to play as a team they feel comfortable on and they've really just executed it right in the previous tournaments it's been poke compositions before that it was just hard engaged compositions and pit yep. compositions with Bai and Morgana and things like that Syndra Vi's great at that so it's just, uh, you know, that's how the game changes with the meta, so. Oh, and here we go. Dragon fight. This is going to be almost completely uncontested, and it's you know, going. I, I, I got to make a quick blue. point here. I hate to cut you off, but I think we're going to see another fight very shortly. But oh, this red, red team Mercy is. Oh, going in, and that's going to be a very, very dead jinx. Yep, Red Mercy, now godlike. I was going to say, this game could be close all the same uh -oh. if they were able to delay the Baron. They're very close to that fifth dragon, but. That was a lot going on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just... Uh, I was going to say they were still in it, but at this point, I think that was the last straw. Yeah, the Baron buff has done quite a bit. They denied that dragon going to red, so they, they don't have the uh, fourth dragon buff. Hecarim going balls deep onto Cassiopeia and doesn't stand a chance. Deleted from the map, from the game. Virus destroyed. Going to be a 30-minute victory here. They're going to continue pushing. They have so many minions. It should be easy to uh, execute some dives underneath these towers. However, they're going to play it super-duper safe and move towards the top lane, close it out uh, in a very, very safe and calculated way. Make sure you can clear out all three of those inhibitors. Uh, but I, I would expect to see a dive here once their abilities come up. Hecarim doesn't have his ultimate, but they've got uh, Nautilus ultimate and Sejuani ultimate. So here we go. Oh, here we go. Hecarim going in with Wukong, popping the clone. He is gonna have to back off this because they they can't they can't save the turret. Nunu ulting though, just to see if he can get some zone control in. Doing some damage, but not nearly enough. Nautilus getting stuck in a rock or in a grenade, but Red Mercy going in for Jinx and managing to get out. Wukong killing says Wani. Nautilus going balls deep again onto Cassiopeia. Wukong busting up Sivir, but I don't think he's gonna make it. Nope, goes down to Red Mercy to an auto attack. There. And this is the end of the game, ladies are and gentlemen. Still so close to being able to like win these team fights just because of how strong yeah. their comp is. But they, they you know. played it well. You know, it's funny too. This game was pretty methodical, with the exception of Red Mercy just going ham on everything. Yeah, 13, so. 1, and 13. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why Red Mercy is such a strong leader. You can see just you know wins his lane almost every single game and uh, dictates the rest of the game based off of that. LeBlanc, a champion, that really can carry by herself. Uh, not that she needed it this time. His entire team did well, but uh, definitely a contender for the finals at this point. Yeah, Red Mercy just dominating that game. Just dominating. I mean, I've seen some pretty good LeBlancs, you know, in, in LCS, and I gotta say, that's pretty, that's up there. Yeah, That's for sure. up there for, like, LCS level. Yeah, uh, especially the way he was able to control that lane at the start so and fantastic game uh by the blue team and i'm not sure exactly what the record is of the red team here but if they can kind of find a composition that they can play to their strengths it would be you know they've got the potential they've got a smart yeah. pick man phase they do a lot of things right but their itemization needs to be a little bit adjusted and uh you know just try and try and find something that works with them as a team they got to figure it out they got to have one person base the comp around them, and then play it out.
Yeah, and you know what? I feel like if that Cassiopeia had got going a bit more, you know, and it's I, I understand the fear because it's it's tough to live up to fighting against Red Mercy and just and winning lane altogether. It really is tough in, in doing that. Yeah. But if that Cassiopeia, I feel like if she got going a bit more, and you know, we saw the Ludin's Echo come out on her, or possibly a Zanya's for items, I feel like she could have been a bit more of an impact. I just feel like um, we take a look at the itemization coming out of this game, and we see armor being built for Leona instead of going towards uh, the locket, the, the locket, locket yeah. or not even the locket, the uh, the Shrelia's, which name I'm forgetting once the again. Coin. Well, she, well, she she built the um, uh, the face of the mountain, so you can't build two gold items. I mean the, the uh, or the righteous glory, the righteous yeah. glory, and then we should see Ninu, you know, looking towards getting the locket himself instead yeah. of a spirit massage. Yeah. Uh, Solo queue mindset. Yeah, you know, is. it's just really not the optimal items to play that composition. At same yeah. thing, going for finishing the tier instead of getting a Rylize. He doesn't really need to live in the front line. He doesn't need that extra shield. He he's not going to be the target. You know, he just needs a Rylize. He needs to be able to peel for his Jinx kill the front line as they run in and let his team deal with the back line but unfortunately nobody was able to kind of synergize and you know play it out properly yeah that's unfortunate for for red side they have the potential though they yeah they did have the potential they had the team comp if i think they stood away from the solo queue mindset like you said got the rylas instead of finishing off the uh seraph's embrace you know or getting the righteous glory instead of the spirit massage or getting the uh the locket instead of the you know, armor items or whatever combination of how they wanted to build stuff. If they had gotten those items, I feel like they could have stood a better chance. So. That is it for us for now, guys. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and uh, we'll catch you with the next game very shortly. This is the ESC Solo Queue Legends Tournament number two. Number two. Sponsored by Red Mercy. Obviously, he just wants to get his name all over this. And stream. Red Bull. And well. Red Bull. So, red, the Reds. A lot of red things today. Like... Uh, red teams losing. Red teams, yeah. Red teams losing. Red Bull, Red Mercy, Red Team. Red 5. Alright, we'll be back, guys. Yep. <laughs> 